I have to tease Tim. I'm always giving him and Dan a hard time. Yes, I think it. Yes, I think it's part of who I am. <laughs> uh, I get to. Yeah, big difference. I get to. Uh, Jeremiah and Stacy are out this week. They send their love. Uh, we will be having our youth conference, and I believe that's next weekend. On Friday, we start everything, so there'll be a couple of bonfires, all kinds of kids. So bring your children, register if you haven't already. Uh, we're still taking those. Um, plenty of food. Just come to have fun. <laughs> Enjoy Jesus. So now I have the honor of introducing someone that I consider very dear to me, and that is Cassie. And we can't wait to hear what God gave you today. Good morning. Good morning. So for all the visitors, I'm so glad you guys joined us. This is a family here. Like this is not just a place to go on Sunday and, you know, to call church. This is family. And um, that's what drew me in. I realized that this place cares about the one. And that meant so much to me. So um, if you're a visitor, I invite you to come back. Jeremiah. His heart is just pure in love for Jesus, and he's on fire for Jesus. And um, so, Brian, the worship, I just think everything is so anointed here. And um, so I just invite you back. And to my family, I love you all. I know I haven't seen you guys lately. <laughs> Even though I call you family, I've been the prodigal child. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, um, we've been doing boat ministry and um but we've sold the boat so we're going to be back but um we've been you know you guys know we did street preaching um we traveled the country from coast to coast and i i say i was telling my husband that is easier than this i mean i would stand on las vegas strip preaching to people and i found that so much easier than this because those people i didn't have to see again <laughs> i could get in the rig and be gone if i said something wrong i'd be like okay bye guys and i'm gone here I got to see you guys again. So <laughs> please have grace on me. This is my very first time standing before a church. Um, it's different. I do preach on our, our ranch that we have. We do women's retreats and, and I do preach in there. Um, but it's just a little bit different when you're standing on your own land, I think. So I'm just asking for grace today. That's right. That's what the Lord told me coming here today. He was like, Cassie, it's all mine. So what? That's in your head. Get it out of your head. It's all mine. So I was, Thank you, Lord. Um, so, and, and I also wanted to say kind of what they hit on. I know Jeremiah's heart. He guards this pulpit because he loves his people. So the fact that he let me do this, I just want to say is such an honor. Like if I get up here and completely bomb it and all my words get all mixed up, I just want him to know, thank you for believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. So, um, so I did want to say that today, my sermon is titled, Communion and the power punch benefits for believers, not the world. And I have to say, for my very first sermon, this is what the Lord put on my heart a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, Lord, really? Like, there's so many other things that would be so much easier to talk about. Like, this is, the, even the verse he gave me, to me, was one of the hardest verses for me to, like, comprehend. I wanted to skim over even as a blood-bought believer. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is what you want for me to do? I'm going to do it. So... Anyway, let's pray, and then we're going to get started. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your amazing, radical, life-transforming love. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus. We invite you in. Holy Spirit, lead us, guide us, teach us. Let the words be of you, Father. I thank you so much for who you are and what you do for your amazing love. And Jesus, we just want to shine bright for you today. Let us be your vessel. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So, Jeremiah and Grant, their, uh, their sermons are on nice little computers. Like, this is what I got <laughs> on a clipboard. <laughs> so, if it kind of falls or messes up, I'm sorry, guys. But um, So, I want to get started with John 6, 5, 3. Can we put that up there, Casey? I'm going to get my Bible. We are in the New King James Translation. That's okay. So, it's okay. I'll just read it. It's um, very simple. 
Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat of my flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those are powerful words. And I'm going to be honest with you, as a blood-bought believer, that's something that I'm like, Lord, isn't there a better way you could have said that? I mean, like, really? Until I got the revelation. Until he gave me this recent revelation, and I was like, oh, my goodness, Lord, that is so powerful. And he said, that's what I want you to give them. So to get started with that verse, we're going to go back to the beginning. What made Adam and Eve fall? What did they do that caused sin to come into the world? What was the action? I know y'all know. They took a bite of the apple. They ate of the apple, right? Their eyes were opened to their nakedness. They didn't know they were naked before. It says they were in divine health. Their eyes were God conscious. But they took a bite of the apple. The temptation was there. And immediately their eyes were open to their nakedness. It says they tried to hide and cover themselves. God asked them, how did you know you're naked? Because they took a bite of the apple, right? See, the world is still feasting on this apple. The world is still feasting on the sin that opened the door. That's the world's way. But we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So we're going to first talk about the flesh. When Jesus says, eat of my flesh, what he is saying is, I need you to look back at me. I need your eyes fixed on me. See, sin, by the disobedience, sin was brought into the world. But when we take communion, we are fixing our eyes back on Jesus. We're saying, I know what you did on my behalf. So I need you to get a hold of this. This is so powerful. So what happened in the fall, disobedience came into the world, but God loves, his hum- loves humanity. It says we are made in his image, that he, we're made in his likeness, that he gave us dominion over everything out of all of his creation. It's us, guys. He loves us so much that he made us in his image. So he said, I, I'm going to try to, I'm going to restore it. And that's what the old covenant did. You had 613 laws and, and it wasn't a restoration of it. What it did was a, a, a temporal covering. That's what the old covenant, the old covenant was never meant to save you. It was actually meant to show you that you're not worthy of God's standard. That's what the old covenant was. So then you have, um, you have the old covenant and then Jesus, God looks at Jesus and says, son, you and I are going to make a covenant on their behalf. And that's what Jesus came onto the scene. So he knew humanity was going to mess it up because that's what we do, right? That's who we are. He loved us so much that he looked at his son and he said, you and I are going to go in covenant on their behalf. So we get to reap the benefits of what this happened. This is what love is. This is agape love. Jesus said, okay, send me, daddy. Send me. Let me step on earth. Let me just put my earth suit in and step on and take all the sins of the world and say, I I will take it all. You are, we are made blameless because he took it for us. Jesus did everything. If we truly believed it, we would know the benefits. We're not supposed to look like the world. All the problems that the world's dealing with are not for his children. We're the remnant of Christ. This covered this. So when we eat of the flesh now, the world is eating on the apple. The world is still eating on the apple. It's it's feasting on that right now. In the last days, he said, I'll pour my spirit out even more. Why are we not seeing it? It's not because he hasn't done it. It's because we're not receiving it. It's done. When we eat of that apple, or I'm sorry, when we eat of that flesh, we're saying, no, 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 world, you can have that apple. You can have all, all that this, all that that brings that sin. I'm eating on the flesh of Jesus because it was finished. So when this covenant went in, when he went into covenant and, and he stepped on this earth and he paid the price and he said, what was his last words? Tetelestah. It is finished. It's done. 
You can't add to it. You can't take away it. If our sins were, were bigger than what this was, guys, come on. That has been a lie from the pit of hell. Religion, man-made religion wants you to think that you have something to do with it. We ain't got nothing to do with it because Jesus knew we would mess it up. So guess what? This is it. There is nothing bigger than this. I love my people so much, I'm sending my very best. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his son, his only begotten son. And Jesus loved so much that he said, send me, daddy. Send me. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. Send me. I know how much you love them. I know how much you love your people. Send me. When you get that, when you really get that, no devil in hell can steal the benefits from you. That's when you step and he steps. That's when you speak and he speaks. The world doesn't want you to know the power you hold. You don't hold it because of you. You hold it because of him. You hold it because of what was done on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I don't know where I'm at in my message already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. John 1 tells us the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, here's the honest truth of it. The flesh restores you and the blood redeems you. That's what the Lord told me. The flesh restores you, Cassie. My blood redeems you. The flesh, when you eat of that flesh, you're saying every promise in this book, oh my, every promise in this book is yes and amen. I receive it, Jesus. I receive it. No devil in hell can steal from me. I receive it. I am greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. A thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right, but it shall not come near me. I receive it. I receive it. He says, how do you receive it? By faith. That is our part. That is our part in all this. Faith. Believe that what he did was enough. Believe you don't have a place. That has been a lie from the pit of hell, guys. Man-made religion wants you to believe that you're in this yo-yo up and down. Well, today I was good. Uh, yesterday, I don't know. Lord, I think I'm saved. Mm, I'm not sure. I live that life. No devil in hell can do that to me now. I'm saved because nothing is bigger than this. I am sealed by the promise. So good. So good. So the flesh restores you. When you eat on that, you're eating on all the promises of yes and amen. Everything he came to this earth and he said, I want it for you. It is yours. Now receive it. So good. Now we're going to talk about the blood. The blood redeems you. The definition of re redemption is the action of saving or being saved from error or sin. The action of saving or being saved. The blood redeems you. When we do a breakdown of DNA, when we want to know where someone's genealogy comes to, what do we do? A DNA test, right? It'll trace down to almost 100% accuracy back to the Father. We know that Jesus Christ was 100% human from his mama's side, and he was 100% God from his daddy's side. When we trace that blood back, guys, one day I was down at the boat, and I was by myself. He, he had left to go get something. The kids were gone. And I was sitting on the couch just praising him, just talking to him. And I, I just heard instantly, it was my blood. It was my blood. I sat there, What? It was my blood, Cassie. I, your father, love you so much. I sent my very best. I, being God, can do only what God knows how to do. Make a way for his very own blood to touch the earth, to cover the sins of the world. That's what his son did on our behalf. That's why the only way to the father is through the son. That's what love is. That's agape love. Let me be the sacrificial lamb. Send me. Let that let your blood cover the earth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Jesus. The enemy does not want us to understand this. It's what man-made religion has stopped. I often think about the millions that have went on that didn't know, didn't get in this. See, they just learned what their daddy taught them and what their daddy taught them and what their daddy taught them. They didn't pick the Bible up and read it for themselves and know these promises are mine. These are mine. These were bought for me. See, I grew up in a church... They love the Lord. They love the Lord. But you'd have to hit the person beside you when the communion tray was coming around because they're either falling asleep or looking at their clock to see what time lunch was. They didn't understand the benefits. See, you don't understand the benefits or else you're on the edge of your seat saying, bring it. Bring it. Come on, because I know when I take this that I'm in communion. I know the promises are yes and amen. Bring it. I do communion often. Often. I have it in my, in my kitchen. I have it in my bedroom. I have it in my vehicle. I have little communion things because it's a promise. You know, what? in my mind, what I, what I, the way I look at it, I'm reminding myself, Cassie, it's finished. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. You're not too good for it. You're not too bad for it. There's nothing about you. It is about this. I'm reminding the devil. Guess what, devil? You're a defeated foe. My Jesus paid the price. It is finished. And I'm telling God, I'm taking all these promises by faith. Everything you promised for me to have, I say yes and amen. Everything I was created for on this earth, I say yes and amen. See, he says, I'm no respecter of persons. What I did for one, I'll do for all. I wasn't, I didn't know this until I got in it myself. The Holy Spirit fire comes on you. And I tell you guys, it's for everyone. His promises are yes and amen. So good. We were rescued 2,000 years ago. See, that's what Jesus, that's who he is. He's a rescuer. I'm going to share the vision that he gave me that changed everything for me. See, when I talk, and I get asked this a lot, so I'm going to cover this. I get asked, what do you mean you hear from God? Or what do you mean he gave you a vision? See, I tell my, my kids, I'm like, you know, you know my voice. It doesn't matter if I'm around the, the corner. You don't see me. You know my voice because we're in communion all the time. When you're in communion with Jesus, you hear his voice. He's alive. He talks to you. He walks with you. We're not serving a dead God. We're serving a risen Savior. So he talks to you. And when you're constantly in communion, you know that voice instantly. I'm like, boom, I know that voice. And he has that for everyone. I hear people say, oh, no, he don't talk to me. Yes, he does. I promise he talks to you. You need to get alone and listen. See, the Bible says seek and seek with your whole heart, and that's where you'll find me. So the vision that God gave me. I'm probably going to cry. I'm a crier. I'm sorry. But it was just so powerful. Thank you. I was, it was actually during COVID. It was right before we went on the road to do street preaching. And I needed to receive this. I had to receive this to walk into where God wanted me. And I pray that you guys, your hearts are open today and you receive this. So there was this man down on the ground in my vision. And it was as plain as day. I was sitting on the front porch and um, I seen this man sitting on the ground and he was just defeated with the, the weight of the world. Condemnation. He was just, and just uh, done. And then I seen this white robe. I never seen Jesus' face, but from the peace that came off of it, I knew instantly it was Jesus. But it was from here down, and he was leaning over the man, and he had a present. It, had a, it was wrapped with a bow, and he was leaning over trying to hand it to that man. And the man kept pushing it away and telling him, I'm not worthy You don't even know who I am. Why would you give that to me? I don't know you. You don't know me. This went on for minutes. He was fighting, receiving, saying, no, you don't know me. Why are you doing that? Why why would you want to give that to me? Continued fighting. Jesus just stood there. The peace that came off of him was so amazing. 
And he just stood there. The man fought and fought, and finally he said, fine. And he took the gift. And when he took the gift, I seen this light go into his belly. It was salvation. It was, yes. So, but I seen that light go in his belly. But then, get this, guys. When Jesus did that, he turned around. And when he turned around, there was a mountain of gifts. And he let me know, I just knew all those were for that guy. Everything, a mountain of gifts with bows on it. He took another one, and he went to hand it to him, and the man did the same thing over and over. See, he, how many people know somebody like this? I'm, I got my salvation. Now, that's it. That's all. We all know somebody like that. They don't believe for the rest. They believe that they're going to get into heaven by the hair of their chinny-chin-chin, chin, and that's it. It's not the God I serve. So he's trying to give him, an, he was given another, and we started this all over, him fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. Finally, he took it. When he did that, I seen the light again. I was like, that's strange. But I just kept watching. This went on. On the third time, the only words that was spoken from Jesus, the man was fighting again. Why are you doing this? And the only words in this whole vision I heard Jesus say, it's not about you. It's who I am. It's not about you. It's not about your sin. It's not about how good you are. It's not about how bad you are. It's about who I am. This is who I am. I want to love you. I died for you. I didn't die just for you to go to heaven. I said on earth as it is in heaven. See, here's the honest truth, guys. Let's go back to Adam for a second. When, before they ate the, the apple, there was no death. There was no sickness. Divine relationship with Jesus Christ, or with God, right? Divine, re when, they, when their eyes were opened, they became sin conscious. What Jesus fixed, he brought back to God consciousness. That's why God himself told us in the Lord's Prayer, pray on earth as it is in heaven. That's how it was. So the man started receiving finally, and then instantly I seen him standing up. And he was, he had his hair like combed back. He was in a three-piece suit and he was ready to go. And the Lord said, then you can be my hands and feet. See, we have to receive first. Before we can be all God put us on this earth to be, we have to receive. We have to, and, and we have to receive that it's not about us. We have to receive the benefits of Jesus Christ. Guys, it was finished on the cross. There's nothing you can do to add to it. There's nothing you can do to take away from it. If we only knew, if we only knew, are you going to be that person that leaves a mountain of, of gifts? He says, let me show you what I had for you. Let me show you what, what you really had. Look at this. Not me. Once I had that vision, I'm like, bring it. Bring it all. I believe, Lord. I believe you were enough. I believe you died for me and you rose and you conquered death. You conquered sickness. You conquered everything under this earth. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. Nothing. Nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus. When we start receiving that, our lives change. Not just head knowledge. You've got to get heart knowledge. You have to know that you're enough. You've got to get out of this yo-yo of, I want to be good. Lord, help me, help me. No, if we understood it, our prayer would no longer be, God, please do this. It'll be, God, please help me receive it because I know you've already done it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See, how many times do we pray that? God, please, I need a healing in my body. God, please, I need this. God, please help me. He's saying, I've already done it. Receive it. Take it. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Receive it. What is it you're waiting on? What is it you need? What is this? Is this your healing? Is this your deliverance? Is this that situation? Receive it. It's who I am. It's what I do. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. The last thing that I wrote down is just God showed me the, the um, story of the centurion servant. The centurion never went to Jesus because he didn't feel worthy. But he had faith, right? He sent people on his behalf. 
The Bible tells us that Jesus marveled at that faith. And see, here's the honest truth of it all. He didn't even have the Bible. He just knew that there was the man of God walking the earth. He didn't have the words that we have. He didn't have all of this, the Bible promises of yes and amen. But he believed. He believed enough that Jesus said, wow, that's faith. And instantly, the, man, the servant was healed. Instantly. So here's my question to you. We know that we serve a risen Savior. We know he's alive. So what is the problem? The centurion didn't see him and he received it. Why do you have to see it to receive it? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for him, he wants to do for you. There's not one place in this entire Bible you can show me where someone asked him for anything, a healing, and he did not give it. That's not the God we serve. He's love. He's love. He wants divine relationship with you. He wants to walk with you and talk with you. He wants to take all of what, what Adam brought in this world. He, he restored us and redeemed us from the curse, guys. We're no longer under the curse. We're the remnant of God. It's just so good. So maybe our prayer should be, help me to have faith like the centurion, Lord. Help me to not have to see it to believe it. Help me to have that kind of faith, Lord. Maybe that should be our prayer. Help my unbelief. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are so good. It's all about you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you've come here today and you don't have a personal walk with Jesus, it's so simple. I know the world wants to complicate it. It's so simple. Here's, here I am, Lord. I surrender all. It's that easy. If you've had a relationship and you don't feel like you're where you should be with him, here I am, Lord. Help me. I surrender all. That's all he's looking for. He just wants our hearts. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to do communion today. I'm asking everyone, Brian's going to play a song. Um, if you need prayer, the Bible tells us where two or more are gathered, he is there. There's not one part of the Bible that's not true, guys. There's not one part that's like, well, I don't know if he meant that. No, he meant that. Where two or more are gathered, I am there. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So if you need anything, I'm asking you, if you'd like to come forward, I'd love to pray with you. If you want a personal relationship and you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, it's, I promise you guys, it rocked my world. I grew up under man-made religion. I got set free. I got set free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. more